Hi, in this particular video, we're going to be looking at some fairly challenging Pythagoras questions. So you need to be familiar with how Pythagoras works. And if you're not sure, add a comment below. I'll put you through to the playlist or click this link. OK, so let's have a look at the four questions that are going to be in this particular worksheet. You can also download them from the website itself. OK, so question number one, we're going to be looking at calculating the lengths. BD and AD, which is actually this length BD and this length AD. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to look at BD itself. Now, in order to do that, I'm just going to draw a quick sketch and it just makes my life a little bit easier to have 10 there, 18 there and BD. So basically, this sketch is exactly the same as this triangle here. And then I'm going to use A squared equals B squared plus c squared. Now I'm very aware that some people will say, oh no, no, it's c squared equals a squared plus b squared or something else. Okay, the way I always do it has been a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And that's what I'm going to stick to on this particular video, but you're perfectly welcome to do it the other way if you prefer. OK, so with this one, I'm saying that a squared is always the hypotenuse, which is 18 squared. B squared is going to be the side which I've got, which is 10 squared. And then C squared is what I'm looking for. So basically, I need to make C squared the subject. So I'm going to take away the 10 squared from the 18 squared. And what I'm going to end up is going to be 14.966, OK, which is going to be equal to C. And if I want to do that correct to two decimal places, it means that BD is going to be equal to 14.97 centimetres. And that would be the answer to the first question. OK, so we're going to use exactly the same principle when we're working through the rest of these questions. OK, so question number two, I've got um, work out the length of AD. OK, now, so AD, I'm going to do again a little sketch. And what I'm going to say is that's absolutely fine. I've got AD at the bottom here. It's a right angle triangle. It's 10. And I now know because of my previous calculation that this length is 14.97. And again, that's correct to two decimal places. OK, so sometimes with a lot of these Pythagoras questions, you are asked to kind of calculate one thing and then use that to calculate something else. So it's quite common, these sorts of questions. OK, so let's have a look then at working out AD. Well, again, I'm going to use A squared equals B squared plus C squared. OK, what I do know is that so I'm just going to move this up a little bit like that. OK, so what I do know is that a squared is this length along here, it's the hypotenuse, but I also know that it's actually 224 because when I did my initial calculation, this is uh, c squared and this actually here is going to be 224. So I'm going to leave that and that equals 10 squared plus c squared. Again, I've got to make c squared the subject of the formula. So it's going to be 224 minus 10 squared. And that's going to give me 11.1355 which equals C. So therefore, on this particular question, I now know that AD is going to equal to two decimal places, 11.14 centimetres. OK, and that would be the answer to part one. OK, so the rest of this question then is all about working out the area and perimeter and that sort of thing. And again, it's very common. This is actually the longest question on this particular worksheet. But please do stop the video. Have a go at these questions. OK, so if we have a look at part B, the total perimeter of the shape is going to be the distance all the way around. OK, well, we've got all of the information that we need. We need the perimeter is going to be equal just for the sake of this video. I'm going to write it all out as AB plus BC plus CD and then plus D and back to A again. So that's going to give me 10 plus 10 plus 18 plus 11.14. And when I add all of that up, I'm going to get 49.14 centimetres, which is the perimeter of that particular shape. OK, area of triangle is base times height divided by two. We're going to do that twice because there's two triangles and pretty much that's it on the set on the final question, which I think is going to be uh, part C. So part C is going to be the area 
which is C here. Okay, I'm just going to move that up again ever so slightly. Now that's going to be equal to triangle ABD plus triangle BCD. So to work out the area of a triangle, I write it as base time height divided by two plus base times height divided by two. Uh, some people might write a half base times height. That's perfectly fine, it's exactly the same. It's just in this particular one, I'm gonna to stick to the way I always do these types of questions. And again, if you look at some of the other worksheets, it gives you very similar examples. Okay, so base times height divided by two for ABD is going to be equal to 10 times 11.14, all divided by two. I'm gonna put that in brackets, and then I'm gonna add it to BCD, which is 10 uh, times 14.97, all divided by two. When I add those two together, I get 130.55 centimeters squared, which is the area of the two triangles put together. That's it for question number one. Okay, let's move on to question number two, which is a little bit shorter than this one. We'll see how we get on with it. Okay, so question number two is going to be dealing with uh, finding the length x, y on some coordinates. Okay, so really the best idea with these, as we did before, is to do a little bit of a sketch. And if I just draw a grid in here, okay, what I've got is um, point X, which is going to be 6, 3. So I'm going to say that's here and that's going to be 6 and that's going to be 3. And then point Y is going to be 2, 8. So that's going to be up here. So that's 2 and 8. So basically what we're being asked to do is find the length between X and Y. Okay, um, and the easiest way to do that is to use Pythagoras. There is a separate video on Pythagoras line segments, and I'll put a link below in the description if you want to practice these types of questions. OK, so if I convert this into basically a right angle triangle, I've got a distance along here of four and a distance here of five. Hopefully that's shown up on the video. It is quite a small sketch, but hopefully you'll be able to work that out. That If we use a squared plus b squared equals c squared, I've got four squared plus five squared, that's going to equal the a squared is equal to 41. Therefore, a equals the root of 41. Now you'll notice that the question asks for the answer of three significant figures. Usually these sorts of questions are about three marks. Uh, there is one mark allocated for the sig fig bit or the decimal place at the end. So please do always go back and check your particular working. So in this particular uh, calculation, I can write that as A equals 6.403124. And to three significant figures, that's 6.40. OK, don't forget the zero at the end because it's three significant figures. OK, we're going to do exactly the same exercise then with part B of this particular question. So the first thing is, is draw a sketch. OK, uh, I'll try to make it just a little bit bigger. But basically, I've got 11, 6, which is going to be 11 and 6. So that's this point X at the top there. And then I've got 13, 0. So that's 13, 0, which is going to be this point Y. We're being asked to make this length and therefore I can draw this as a rectangle, um, as a right angle triangle with a base of two and then a height of six. OK, so again, very, very similar with all of these types of questions. It's worthwhile using exactly the same method. So we're going to then work that out as a squared equals b squared plus c squared. B squared plus C squared. OK, um, A squared is the hypotenuse, which is the length that we're looking for. I've got six squared plus two squared. Pop that into a calculator. I get A squared equals 40. Or if you prefer, A is the root of 40. And again, as before, we need to write that in its uh, three significant figure form. So 6.32. Four, five, five, five is the calculation. That becomes 6.32. And that would be the answer to question number two. OK, so let's have a look at question number three. Please do stop the video. Have a go at each of these questions. Compare your solutions. We'll move on to question number three. Now, this one is, again, where you do need a sketch for this type of thing. So Joe travels at 12 kilometres um, an hour for uh, due north, okay? So let's have a look at that. 
There he goes, he starts at that point here. Okay, he, try, he guys, goes 12 kilometers for an hour due north. He then turns west and travels at six kilometers per hour. <laughs> and I've just realized that that should be also for one hour. Apologies, I will change the question sheet to reflect that. I do apologize on that particular one. So he's also going six kilometers per hour due west for one hour. Okay, so on this particular sketch, He's going to go this way. It's a right angle triangle. This is going to be six. And he's now at that point. And the first question is, how far is he from the starting point? So again, we can use Pythagoras to be able to calculate that. Generally, once you've got these sketches in place, it's fairly OK, fairly mm, easy enough to kind of figure out that it's going to be a Pythagoras type question. Although the bearing bit at the end of this question, we're going to need to use a different method. So let's have a look firstly at the distance. OK, well, again, I'm going to use the same calculations as always. A squared equals B squared plus C squared. My hypotenuse is A squared, which is this long line, which is the answer to the question. And my B squared is 6 squared plus 12 squared. That's going to give me A squared is equal to 180. So therefore, A is going to equal the square root of 180, which is 13.4164. Uh, OK, so therefore, the distance from the starting point is equal to 13.4 kilometers, and that's to one decimal place. And that would be the answer to the first question. OK, second question is a little bit trickier. This is actually a soccer toa type question. If you're not sure, always add a comment below. I'll also put some links below in the description. You'll be able to click on that. And there are some further worksheets on that for you to have a go at. OK, so part B of this is um, exactly the same triangle, but this time I'm just going to mark it up in a slightly different way. I know this is 12, which is the opposite. I know this is the hypotenuse because it's the longest side. And the angle we're looking for is this one here, because if we need to know the bearing, we need to know this altogether. Now, this part of it is 90 degrees, but the last part of it, this part in here, we need to add on to 90 degrees and that will then give us the total bearing because you'll remember the bearings are from the north clockwise. OK, so we've got that 90 degrees. We need that extra little bit and we're going to use trigonometry to be able to find that out. OK, so we're also uh, we know this is six along here because that's how far he went when he traveled due west. OK, so if I uh, write Sorka Toa into here, the angle that is 12 here is the opposite or rather the length is the opposite. Now, I know the opposite and I know the adjacent. OK, now the easiest thing for me to use is the tan relationship. So tan equals opposite divided by adjacent. OK, now if you're not sure about any of these things, don't worry about this type of question. We're really knocking on the door of grade five on these and these are quite challenging questions. So don't worry about it. Add a comment or follow the link. OK, so tan of x, which is the angle, is going to equal the opposite, which is 12, over the adjacent, which is 6. OK, once I put that into my calculator, I'm going to write that as the inverse reciprocal. OK, because then that will give me the ability to be able to figure out the actual angle, which is 63.435 degrees. OK, so therefore the bearing is going to be 90 plus 63.435, we'll call it, and that's going to be equal to 153.435 degrees. And that would be the answer to that particular question. So a little bit more challenging if you're not used to these sorts of things. Let's... Uh, Draw a veil over that one and we'll move on to the final question. So the final question isn't too bad and probably is more reflective of a, a kind of a more practical 
type of maths, which is a builder and he wants to know the length of a beam where he's actually building a house. OK, so give your answer correct to two decimal places. Well, hopefully you'll be able to see that actually what we can do there is we can just make this into a right angle triangle. Now, if we've got a right angle triangle, what we can say then is that we know the hypotenuse is going to be 3.4. We also know that the height is going to be the difference between 9.4 and 7. So this is going to be 2.4. OK, so therefore I can use Pythagoras in order to be able to calculate the length of at least half of the beam because I've made a right angle triangle. So once I've got that, I'm just going to double it and that'll give me the total beam length. OK, so let's have a look again. I'm going to use a squared equals b squared plus c squared. I know that a squared is my hypotenuse, which is 3.4 squared. B squared is the, is the length I know, which is 2.4 squared plus C squared. I've got to make C squared the subject of my formula. So it's going to be 3.4 squared minus 2.4 squared. And that's going to give me 5.8 squared equals C squared. OK, if I then square root, I'm going to get 2.4083. OK, but what you've got to remember is that's only half the beam because we created that right angle triangle. So all I've got to do is double it. That'll give me my total beam length. OK, so my total beam length is going to be uh, double this one above, which is going to be 4.8166. OK, so correct to two decimal places is 4.82 metres. OK, and that would be the answer to the question and the end of this particular worksheet. Hope you found it useful. Please do add a comment below if you're not sure about anything. I look forward to seeing you inside the next video.